Wow, that's hard to believe now looking at you. Um, uh, I know that um, you mentioned you you challenge yourself to do more. Um, how do you think that has impacted you, you know, in terms of, you know, having brothers, having to compete, and then you, you know, as you became older, when did you start with your, your fitness journey? Yeah, my fitness journey, I would say, started back in seventh grade. That's when I started lifting weights, and that's when I started also becoming very aware and, and hyper aware, actually, of uh, my body and the, um, you know, where I was, I became very upset with how I looked. And that was, that was seventh grade was the year that I realized I started having issues with body dysmorphia. I didn't really know what the, that term until later in life, but I just found myself always looking at my stomach, pinching my stomach, pinching other parts of my body that appeared fat to me. And it was something where I realized that it was putting me in a bad mood at the beginning of every day, because every day I'd go walk into the bathroom, I'd look in the mirror, brush my teeth, and I'd instantly see something I didn't like. And so uh, that's when that all began. For fitness then became the avenue that I could take to hopefully um, be able to negate a lot of these negative feelings that I started to feel and have towards myself. And, but it, it was, it took a while. Uh, I don't think I figured out how to correctly manage my body dysmorphia until I got my diet under control, which took up until my 27th birthday. I remember that's when I started to finally figure out nutrition. So 15 years is how long it took. It was a process, but I stuck with it. And I'm on the other side of it now, at least managing um, my, my feelings and the way I view myself now, I at least have my body dysmorphia under control. Wow. So that's really, really brave of you to share that. Um, a lot of people, when you have things that are, you know, connected with your feelings, your emotions, you shut them down, you know, cause you, you, you can either avoid it and do other things to take your mind off of it or, keep it to yourself. You keep secrets and you, you know, essentially lie to yourself. Um, so 20 years it took for you to, I guess, come to terms with that realization. Um, you know, I just, I can't imagine, um, you know, living, well, I had depression. I had things that came out in my life. Um, but it was something that eventually I had to share with the world. Um, and, it, the process I know that I took, it was not easy. I had to be vulnerable and I had to open up to understand what was going on with me in order to get ahead of it, right? I had to open up and be honest. So that's just, that's huge that you're able to do that now. And I know that's going to inspire many people. And that, that, uh, this, this morphia, um, is that something that is, is common, in, do you know? Because I actually know someone who, you know, I saw a bruise and I'm like, Where, how'd you get that bruise? And th they told me, they confided in me, oh, that's, I just do that. It's something I do. And, and I, you know, I connected this that, okay, that love handle <laughs> was something that, and that, because it wasn't the first time. And so it's interesting because now I know there's actually, you know, something having to do with that, right? When you see you're not necessarily f fat, overweight, but at the same time, it's, it's a skewed view of your.